I was contemplating creating the persistence of vision display for a while now, but I was just not sure the small DC motors I have were up to the task. I didn't want to invest time only to find out that they are not. But guess what I have recently stumbled across in my garage? This old fan might be perfect for the project like this. Let's give it a try. I will start with mechanical parts of the project as they really present the biggest challenge here. The engine of the fan is old and it does not turn fast enough for the fan to work properly. I just hope it is still fast enough for what we are trying to do here. The next step is to create custom fan wing with built-in LED microcontroller and power supply. I created the design of the fan wing in Tinkercad. You can see the compartments for all needed components, as well as the slot through which LEDs would be visible. The project can be saved to a file and sent to the 3D printer. It took approximately three hours to print, Final result looks great. Let's test if it would fit on the mounting rod and into the fan cage. Fits perfectly. I design one extra part. It is a magnet holder that will be mounted to the fan cage. This magnet is going to interact with hole sensor that will be placed on top of the fan wing. I would fix it to the fan cage with hot glue. Now that we have this out of the way, we can look at connecting all components. The challenge here is that all components need to fit onto the fan wing, including power supply. In this case, I chose 9 volt battery. We start by connecting power supply ground to Arduino ground and positive of power supply to VIN pin of Arduino. We connect the cathodes of all LEDs to ground as well. Then, we connect anodes of all 10 LEDs through pull-up resistors to Arduino digital pins D2 through D12, as shown here. And finally, we connect ground and 5 volts to the ground and VCC pins of hall sensor. The signal pin of hall sensor is connected to Arduino digital pin 13. Since all components need to be mounted on the fan wing, using the breadboard here is not an option. I would use generic PCB board. I had a plan to show you the whole process of creating that PCB, but my soldering skills are not really something I should be showing off, so I would show you just the final result. Let's break it up and double check the connectivity. We start with connecting all grounds, then we connect power supply to Arduino board. Next we connect whole sensor ground, VCC and signal pins. And finally, all LED anodes to digital pins of Arduino. Before we continue, it is worth checking if all LEDs work. I wrote a sample program to do a quick test. Everything is fine and we may continue. It's time to mount all tech components on the fan wing. For starters, we connect PCB with microcontroller to hole sensor. And then mount both on the fan wing. Then we take 9 volt battery and we also attach it with double sided tape. You wonder what those coins are for? They will be used to balance the fan wing, so there is no need to chase the fan around the room when it is on. And finally, we connect the power supply to the board. When I reset the Arduino board, you see that there is already some sketch loaded that controls LEDs. It will be used to explain the concept of POV display later on. In one of my recent videos, 
I have been controlling 8x8 LED matrix with multiplexing. Here is the way I was able to display a sample clip art. You can see that I needed 16 Arduino pins to control 8 rows and 8 columns. In a sense, POF display is very similar to multiplexing. Actually, it is even slightly simpler. Here we need only as many pins as we have LEDs. We do not need pins to control the columns. We change the column by executing one millisecond delay. In that time the fan wing would move the notch and when we light up next column of the clip art it will show in a different position. So controlling the sequence of LEDs to lit is easy. But how can we ensure they are going to be lit in the place we want them to so the picture is stable? This is the task for a whole sensor. We place it on the top of the fan wing we already fixed a magnet in the fan cage. Only when whole sensor detects magnetic field, the sequence starts. And it always starts in exactly the same place. So that's the theory. Let's see if our device would work like this. You can see that each time the whole sensor comes in contact with the magnet, the LEDs start flickering. When you spin the wing, you begin to see that this is not random and that there is some pattern emerging. We can finally look at the code. As always, we have to declare the pins that are used and specify their type. So 10 LEDs are output ones and the whole sensor is an input one. So let's go straight to displaying our cat clip art. Here is the table representing that pixel art. I created a light column function that reads 10, 0 or 1 values and sends high signal to the corresponding LED pin when the argument value is 1 and sends low signal when argument value is 0. In main loop we first check if the whole sensor detects magnetic field. It does when the low signal is read off the sensor. In this case we go through the for loop that reads cut table column by column and executing light function for each column. There is one millisecond delay between each column. In the video footage, you see the flickering as the camera shutter is not as easily fooled as your eye, but you don't have that when you observe it with your own eyes. Looks okay. Now let's display a simple message. It is the same concept, just the table has more columns. We use the same light column function. Main loop looks the same. The only difference is the table name and number of the loop iterations changing from 8 to 54. You can see that the text expands until the rotation speed stabilizes and the display stabilizes with it. Fantastic result! And finally, I will show you my attempt to create simple animation. I chose characters from a popular arcade game. There is only two frames in that animation and I have placed them in the same table. In the code I am counting the times the whole sensor triggers LED sequence and every fifth time I change to which rows are displayed. We display either 10 top rows or 10 bottom rows. In real life the result looks great, but flickering of video footage kills the final effect and it does not look great. Ok, so this is all for today. I created another pointless project that was a lot of fun to make. I will try to do a follow up video to use this POV display as digital clock. Hope you liked this video. If you did, like, share and subscribe. If you want to support my channel, you can do it either through PayPal or go to my Patreon site. See you in my next video.